A good evening to everyone out there. It's a rainy evening, isn't it? And so we're really glad that there are people at home who are listening to us this evening. You're welcome to your Health 360. My name is, uh, did I say that? Yes, I did. All right. So today with me, and he's already here. So thankful that Dr. Umar Musa, the president of the Resident Doctors Association Kaduna chapter, made time to be here. He actually came in from Zaria. We appreciate you, Dr. Umar Musa. You're welcome. It's great to have you here. All right. Um, thank you very much. Um, good evening, listeners. And good evening to you too, Dr. Umar. So let's quickly get into it. Today we're talking random but interesting health questions or questions about your health. Random but very interesting. Well, we'll get a chance to hear if you think them interesting or not. And so I'm just going to go out and ask Dr. Omar Musa the first question. Doctor, are there people whose blood is sweeter for mosquitoes? I mean, are there people who naturally somehow they call mosquitoes to themselves um there are people i'll tell you that i'm one of them honestly if there are mosquitoes in a place i know because i start to feel their bites almost immediately so are there certain people who attract mosquitoes to themselves yeah um to some to some extent i would say yes um there are individuals who um mosquitoes are attracted to to them and um, these individuals, I don't know whether you are one of them. Uh, mostly, <laughs> I'm you, Doc. Uh, yeah, mostly are uh, individuals with um, blood group O. Um, some studies have shown that um, individuals with blood group O um, attract mosquito bites more than every other uh, blood group. And um, the other blood groups that will follow is blood group A, and then blood group B, and then the AB. Mm. Um, so B A B being the least yes, sweet. Let me use the word sweet or attractive, yes, to, mosquitoes. Yes, more attractive to mosquitoes. Okay. Yeah, you know, um, these studies um, mostly at times there are no clear reasons why it is like that um, medically, but um, these studies are usually arrived at um, maybe um, taking samples from different individuals. Um, let's say maybe one fifty in number. And then these samples from different blood groups um, are being now kept in the lab in the laboratory for some time, and then exposed to mosquito um, around. Mm. And um, so after some time, these samples are now re-examined. So the lesser the quantity, the does, um, which means the mosquitoes have fed on that blood more often than any other blood. Mm. So that is how it has been found that blood group O is more attractive to um, um, blood group O individuals um, attract more blood than others. And um, maybe uh, maybe I will use my little bit of um, training because um, um, as a hematologist in training, um, there's um, a doctor who um, has been trained on blood and other issues. So the blood group O or let me see, let me start with blood group A. Blood group A essentially what it means is that an individual has that the red cell of that individual has a surface antigen of A, and that is why it is being named as A. And then blood group B has an antigen B, but blood group O doesn't have an antigen A and B, and then instead it has. A H antigen. So what that H antigen has um, chemically, looking at its chemical formulation, it has a terminal L fucose, we call it. So L fucose, fucose, sucrose, glucose are all sugary. Mm -hmm. So and that is, I, um, I think, um, to my own knowledge, is the most likely reason why the O blood group attracts more um, mosquitoes, mosquitoes because of that terminal glucose that is in its um, component. So okay. it has more sugary than the other groups. I so is it that like, these yeah. mosquitoes can smell it or? I, I, yeah, they, they have receptors. The mosquitoes, just like humans, <laughs> they have receptors actually. 
so so their receptors can sense um all these um and um okay why they even sense this is that um, these antigens has been explained are uh, also found in other secretions of the body um such as saliva such as sweat mm. and all that so when so perceiving that um odor from maybe saliva from the sweat of an individual right. attracts them more to, to that and then also in some of those hypotheses and why they attract humans is that why they are attracted to humans is that um humans um breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide so that carbon dioxide breath, that mm -hmm. order of carbon dioxide mm -hmm. attracts them more to humans. And then, especially for someone who has um, blood group O. Okay. So just a random question to yeah. following this up. Does this yeah. mean that people who have diabetes yeah. should be extra careful, you know, taking care of themselves in our region, especially seeing as how we have, it's it's a mosquito ridden yeah. um, uh, temperate area that or sorry tropical area that we have yes. so people with diabetes do they need to take extra care seen as um, their correlation with sugar yeah. that's what i'm asking yeah um, um not really as per the correlation between mm. um, people with diabetes and them um, and them um, those um and then those who attract um, mosquitoes and um, maybe the sugar, you know, the sugar we are talking about in diabetes, it's not being um, exposed or not being discharged in saliva or sweat or those others or those secretions that do attract the mosquito patients. Okay. Yeah. So sugar, you don't find those. Uh, but I thought sometimes they say that um, yeah. people with diabetes get to a certain point they start to smell sweet, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. At that point, they may be susceptible to these mosquitoes. Okay. And then even um, because of this, we are in endemic area, and um, diabetes is an immunosuppressive disease. So you know the immune system doesn't have that um, capability to fight most of these infections. So they, they need to be careful with uh, mosquito with bites. mosquitoes. Actually. Yeah. And this is great information too for people, especially who have young children, um, yeah. that, you know, it's great to know one's blood group get to know your child's blood group so that you protect them even better well thank you dr omar for clearing that up at least now i know that is not a mental thing i have yeah, no, no, it's not. <laughs> honestly when i get into any place there are mosquitoes yeah. there i know yeah all right so let's talk about us this is particular to women okay. um you know we hear that when we are sleeping yeah. and uh, we remove our bras lymph Lymph, lymph um, nodes, nodes, nodes drain yeah. well, the, the lymphatics. Yes, yes, they drain better. Yeah. But I also know that some women love to go to bed with their bras on. So okay. the question I think really is: is it is it a good habit to go to bed with your bra on, okay. seeing as how when you are without your bra, your lymph nodes drain yeah, better? Um. Okay. Actually. Um. Yeah. With with the bra or any other. Um, clothings that will obstruct the flow of lymph um, in the lymphatics or in the lymphatics um, system mm. may obstruct um, that flow and then will cause engorgement and whatsoever. Um, but I think primarily it depends on the comfort of, of the lady wearing such bra. If she feels more comfortable sleeping with bra, I think there is no problem. But doc, I that. heard. Sorry to jump yeah. in. That yeah. you know, so just talking about breast cancer and some yes. of the predisposing factors. Yeah. I've heard from people that you know, um, not allowing mm. lymph the drain yes. properly yes. could actually predispose a lady. Yeah. Um, say, for instance, if we're talking breast cancer here, yeah. it also affects other cancers. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Okay. But in, in a lady's, yeah. um, for women, wearing your bra constantly and not yes. giving your lymph nodes. Uh, that time to drain properly yes. could actually predispose you. Is this is this true or there's no basis no, to this? There is no basis to this, okay. absolutely. Okay. Um, it's just a misconception and um, I think we need to correct this because in all the risk factors for developing um, breast cancer, 
there is no such component of um, uh, an obstruction in the drainage of lymph or whatever as a predisposition to developing breast cancer. And um, just like I said, it depends on the comfort of the individual wearing the bra. But actually, there are no studies that have shown that there is a link between a lymph obstruction and breast cancer. Mm. To clear our doubts, um, the risks for breast cancers, which um, you know we, we, we like to categorize for simplicity, um, it's been categorizing to, let's say, major risk factors and then the minor risk factors. And then the major risk factors, number one, a lady that has been female, the gender female, it's not the number one risk factor. The number two, aging ladies, that's maybe about um, um, above 60 to 70 years. And then number three, the most important thing, the inheritance and the mutation of the BRCA gene. We call them BRCA gene. That's breast cancer genes one and two. Mm. So if a lady is uh, inherited such genes and then um, paraventure mutations occur, um, there will be, she has... Um, a higher risk of developing breast cancer and then the other minor risks in quotes though they are also risk factors but in quotes minor um maybe early age at um menarche menarche is um, um menstruation that's the um, mm -hmm. yes let's leave it at that mm -hmm. menstruation so maybe at early age less than 12 years old um someone is susceptible to breast cancer and there may be late menopause to above 55, 60. Um, it's also susceptible. And then um, also exposure to estrogen. That is estrogen because estrogen normally it's um, 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 those hormones um, that ladies do respond to. Ladies naturally produces estrogen, progesterone. And then, you know, there are other synthetic estrogens maybe based on some clinical conditions that ladies are being prescribed um, estrogen so exposure to that predisposes them to breast cancer and then also maybe late is it breastfeeding in quotes uh, maybe um, a lady didn't start breastfeeding until about above 30 years of age so all those are being categorized as like minor um, risk factors so you see, in all this, um, there is no point for lymph node um, mm. obstruction or for lymph drainage right. or what have you. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, let's move on to the next uh, random question. Uh, talking about high blood pressure, there are people who they say develop high blood pressure just by seeing a doctor. Is this true? And if so, how do we know people who really have a problem with their blood pressure, um, apart from those who actually have their blood pressure triggered by, you know, the, the sight of a doctor? Yeah, it is true that um, there are individuals who, um, just by sighting um, not only doctors, uh, maybe hospital staffs, we call them the white coat um, hypertension or white coat um, syndrome. Mm -hmm. So once they just sight that white coat, the um, and begin to panic, and then with that, um, their high, um, their blood pressure um, goes high. Mm. So actually, there are individuals like that, and um, you know from um, how we differentiate the real. Um, all the essential hypertension from those, you know, from the history. Because history, you know, to us, medically, is very important. That is the first stage. Once, um, and then we know this history, all the signs, all the symptoms of um, hypertension. Maybe regular, maybe um, the ones everybody knows, um, having a one-sided headache or a frontal headache or headaches mm. generally. And then having blood vision, having drowsiness, and what have you. Maybe with um, histories of fence and um, other things. Or histories of what? Fence. 
What's that? That's okay, loss fainting. of consciousness. Yes. Okay, okay, yes. okay. A loss of consciousness. Consciousness, yeah. okay. So, um, you see, from the history, we can differentiate those that just developed um, high blood pressure due to um, the white coat syndrome and then those with essential hypertension. So, you see, those with white coat um, syndrome are before seeing the medical personnel, they are um stable or uh, okay um the complaints that brought them to the hospital is different from symptoms of essential hypertension and so with that one can easily differentiate and then even from interacting with them they will tell you maybe the way they interact they have some little they are not being stable they are being destabilized um not really um coherent with um the conversation so you know they'll be that, showing fear. Yeah, they will be showing they'll fear. They'll be jittery. Yes. Okay. Yes. So so from there, you know that one is likely jittering due to the fear of uh, maybe one doesn't, he's afraid of, okay, um, we, he doesn't know what his diagnosis will be. He's afraid. How can he cope with his diagnosis at the end of the day? So all these things trigger the... Um, white coat. Hypertension. Maybe doctors should start wearing blue coats. <laughs> then we'll have blue coats BP. <laughs> All right. Um, let's just move on quickly because I know that there are a lot of people who want to ask you questions too. But yeah. um, just a quick reminder for people, we're actually live on Facebook. You could actually go on Facebook and um, check us out. I hope that the weather will allow for the streaming to be to be good. All right. So let's move on to another one. There's this thing, Doc, Um people when you tell people to show you their tongues yeah. for some people it's just pink and the white patches that we normally have on the tongue yeah. um but for some others you will see black spots. black spots on the tongue now in some of our cultural it, uh, some of our cultures have it that people who have those black patches especially in some particular areas yeah. if they curse you it will catch you okay. <laughs> but that's just on the lighter note what yeah. exactly are those black yeah. Um, spots and um, is it dangerous? Yeah, um, you know it's um, you know we do like to classify some things as maybe physiological and then maybe pathological. Mm. And I think um, it could be physiological. Let's start with um, um, the simple ones. It could be physiological um, because um, those some for for them it could be natural. Maybe due to we are black skinned and uh, all that. It could be natural due to maybe some produce more melanin than others. Okay. So that could be physiological and there will be no problem with that. And then secondly, to maybe exposure to to uh, bismuth, which is just like a chemical. Uh, maybe some of these um, antacids contain this okay. chemical. Those drugs so, that we... Yeah. You need yeah, to break it we, down for us, yes. Doc. What's, what's so, bismuth? So b bismuth is just <laughs> like... Just some of those um, chemicals used in, in drugs production. And then these are being put into the drugs we consume daily. So if one... So but for yeah. what kind of illnesses do you usually take? Yeah, I know what it is because usually, I know I have been taking it. Yeah, you know. usually antacids. Antacids, antacids for yeah, ulcers. Yeah. Yes, for ulcers. Tummy upsets. Yes, tummy upsets. Indigestion. Yes, mm -hmm. all those things. Okay. Some of those drugs contain... Bismuth. Yeah. So once some individuals, if they are taking such um, medications, um, they develop these black spots due to that content of bismuth it okay. has in it. Okay. So, but for some individuals, they don't develop that, and that is not um, worrying. Even those that have those black spots, it's not um, worrying also to us because once they stop taking such medications, that black spot vanishes. Goes. And what if it doesn't? No problem. But I hope, I we hope that it goes once they are off such medications, once they are off such exposure of that um, bismuth um, content, mm. it goes. And um, some of these black spots, maybe coming to the pathological side now, um, we can say are uh, related to maybe, let's say, um, because any part of the body can develop cancer. So it could be a warning sign for development of tongue cancer. 
and then maybe before that time maybe some growth can can occur around the tongues or maybe other hairy whitish patches mm. around the tongues all some of those signs are signs of um, other illnesses or what I mean. mm. okay so that's good to know that it usually disappears because I can tell you that I do have black spots on my tongue, but I know that I've been taking antacids for quite some time now. Anyway, so let's move on to something else and talk about this. A lot of people say you sit for a long time, you'll die early. Is this true? Say if you have a job where you're more sedentary you know you sit a lot office jobs you okay. know like i've heard this said time and again people say look if you sit for too long you'll die early and so a lot of people advise that you know you you fidget make sure that you're either shaking your leg or something get up walk after every maybe every 30 minutes or every one hour something like that and then even when you're sitting on a desk fidget you know like shake your leg do something just make sure that blood is moving so yeah. but is this true yeah it could it could be true um especially when one has um the risk factors um, because um it's not just the sitting that causes um maybe um they are not linked mm. uh, yeah to say that anyone who sits for long and we die early uh, there is no correlation for that except if there are other factors that might lead to um the individual developing um a condition that will lead to his um, death or, mm. or what have you but i think primarily what maybe people thought about it is and then medically for us is that people who sit for long or any individual who stays for long without moving there is something we call even economic class syndrome because why we call it such is that those individuals are prone to develop thrombosis when we say thrombosis in in the blood that means the blood clots and then the process of that clotting is known as thrombus because ideally the blood is in its fluid states so but certain um, individuals are at risk of developing thrombosis and then this thrombosis can occur anywhere but the most predisposed area is the lower limbs and that is why they are called deep venous thrombosis this thrombosis they occur in the venous system not the arterial system and because the venous system is the one which is being um which is performing the function of returning blood back to the heart so if the venous or the veins have sluggish flow so they are predisposed uh, in the um to develop um, thrombosis and then why now these individuals who sit without moving exercise or what have you because the vein is being responsible for returning blood back to the heart and then at this time this individual is static he doesn't um, move a lot and then you see that sluggishness of blood mm. to flow back is now being there so but not everybody develops that except one has a risk factor for developing the venous thrombosis and then these risk factors can be inherited or it could be um, acquired um, just like I said, thrombosis is clotting of blood. And then if you have those factors that will cause the blood to clot, then one is being at risk. And then you see those in, um, um, you can, and then in such situations, you know, these are inherited factors that will cause easy um, thrombosis or um, easy coagulability, we call that. And then all those factor five leading, they are, they are medical terms usually. Um, the listener might not understand what we meant. Mm. But there are inherited factors, especially with the clothing system that may predispose one to develop thrombosis. And then there are acquired factors, which I know the 
um, listening, I will be able to comprehend, such as um, an individual having hypertension, individuals having um, blood, um, sorry, diabetes, um, hyperlipidemias, and then increasing age above 60, 70, because at then, you know, the um, vascular system is now being aging and then it's not being responsive as it's supposed to be. Mm. And um, other factors. So, what such you're as saying, doc, alcohol, now, in, smoking, okay. or what have you, all those are risk factors that may develop, that may um, lead to an individual developing thrombosis. Mm. And when an individual has these risk factors, then it can trigger this thrombosis when he's sitting, not doing anything, and what have you. Okay. Yeah. So, I was just going to ask you that, Doc. So, this means that um, you would advise that yeah. as one grows older, that yeah. we take that even more to heart. You know, yeah. don't sit for too long. Yes. Walk around, you know, fidget. Just make sure that you're moving yeah. in one way or the other. Yes. All right. So, we have with us in the studio, Dr. Umar Musa. Like I said, we appreciate him. Came all the way from Zaria. He is the president of the Resident Doctors Association, Kaduna State chapter let's go on a quick commercial break and when we get back we still have more interesting questions but we'll open up the full line so that as we're asking here you're also asking there so that it becomes even more interesting do stay with us on your health 360 only on invicta 98.9 fm stay with us 360, only on invicta well, thank you so much for staying with us through that commercial break. Back with Dr. Umar Musa with us here on Your Health 360. And uh, we've been asking random, but uh, I think very interesting questions. And it is time for us to hear from you. Let's ask those questions together. And the lines are open. The numbers are 81 and 70 Once again, that's 81 and zero seven zero eight seven eight hundred nine eight nine. I knew it that I wasn't going to be able to ask any more questions. Let's go uh, <laughs> answer this first one. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. You're welcome. Engineer Muhammad Falalibello, Kalipon to Dumarakarina. Engineer, you're welcome. Go ahead with your question. Yes. How work? Work is fine. Thank you for asking. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, doctor, I have some uh, something that confusing me about the COVID nineteen because uh, after these uh, you know Delta you know variant you know there is uh, something that I watch during the Premier League. I saw those uh, Europeans, especially those Britons, you know, uh, no face mask, no social distance, and they are just uh, doing their team together. You know, so I don't know why we are just pressuring presidents we Nigerians to wear the face mask. Oh, another question: If somebody have a, you know, just like a medicine vaccination, you know, you can no longer contact any COVID nineteen. That is why they are just doing so at the stadium. So I don't want you maybe to just explain to me more. Maybe I'll understand about how those Europeans that are doing their normal life without face mask or social distance. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you, Engineer Fadalu. Let's take other calls now. Uh, still taking your calls. Uh, I'm sure you understood him, Dr. Omar. Yeah, I got his All question. right. So let's take another call and then we'll come back to Dr. Omar. Good evening. Hello, good evening, my sister, and good evening to your guest here. You're welcome. Your name? Thank you. Ibrahim, call me Abdullah Doki. Ibrahim, you're welcome. Go ahead, please. So, my own question goes like this. What the, at least, the cost, what is the cost of a crisis? Is this something that really is transferable? Please, what is the cost? So that, if there is a cost to it, so that we're able to at least eradicate or prevent it, because that's what prevention is better than cure. Okay. Secondly, the issue of cost as well, cost are, is this Sorry, I didn't catch you. The issue of what? Your second question. Ulcer, ulcer. Ulcer. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Mm, is it transferable or hereditary as well? Okay. So if not, so you should have said to us so that we're able to at least eradicate or prevent it as well. Thank you very much. Bye. All right. And thank you, Ibrahim. Okay, what was his first question he said? Uh, cost, I thought, cost he, of... The, the cost... 
I will get it. It will is come it to me. Is it hepatitis, he said? No, he said for the second one, he talked yeah. about ulcer. Ulcer, yeah. He said, I'm is it hereditary? Yeah. But I'm there was the first that. one. I, I beg your pardon, Ibrahim. Yeah, I it's, can't it's remember like, I, I for the life of me. But I do know that um, Engineer Falalu was asking why we seem to see white people without their masks and all of that. Yeah. And then black people are being pressurized, according to him, yeah. to take their uh, the vaccinations. Let's add one more question. Ibrahim, your question will come to me. Uh, I, I very remember. good evening, madam. Good evening. Kure, do you remember what Ibrahim was asking? No, I'm okay. just catching you. I just hear the question. <laughs> All right, uh, go ahead. I just, we didn't start I just writing want to, on time. All right, I go welcome ahead. you again. Okay. I just want to okay, ask, what is the much. cause of low BP? That's the just cause that. of thank low BP. Much. And thank you, Kure. If anybody remembers Ibrahim's question, please, the f you could do yes. well to Ibrahim, remind us. call back. Oh, Ibrahim, thank you I for calling that, back. Uh, yes. Said, yes. Because I was listening to it as well. Okay. okay. The, first, the first question is, Arthritis. Oh yes. Is okay, it transferable or hereditary? Okay. If okay. not, let us know so that we're able to prevent it. And if it is transferable as well, we should also prevent it. Thank you very much, Brian. And thank you so much, Ibrahim, for calling back. Uh, doctor, answer those questions quickly so uh, we can go back to yeah, answering calls. Uh, all right. Um you know the issue of um COVID, you know, it's um it's a novel disease. Everyone agrees that. And um essentially um studies, counter studies have been made on COVID-19 especially, some of group of scientists believe that um, the face masks, what have you, um, are not essentially needed to prevent um, COVID-19. While some other groups um, believe that um, social distancing, use of face masks, regular hand washing, and other precautionary steps are very important in um, preventing the transmission of COVID-19. So you see, in a novel disease like this, you have these um, challenges because it's a new thing that we are studying. So, but what we usually practice, not necessarily the, uh, the blacks being pressurized to practice the social distancing. It is just what we chose and then what our um, um, experts here believe in. And that is why we um, are following these steps in preventing the transmission of um, COVID-19. And then the next question, um, the next um, individual asks um, causes About of arthritis. Arthritis, yes. I, I believe. You know, um, Is it hereditary? Yeah, arthritis could be hereditary. And then because um, there are each um, um, instances whereby once um, um, there is a family history of arthritis predisposes um, the next individual to arthritis. It is hereditary and it is also um, acquired that's without any familiar history. So because of time, we cannot go into much details in explaining arthritis. But essentially, once um, an individual develops such symptoms, maybe swollen joint, pain around the joint, inability to walk, he or she can um, um, proceed to see his doctor, especially the orthopedics um so john he um he specialized in managing problems of arthritis is and there anything one can do especially for children seeing as how you said it could yeah, be hereditary. hereditary is there something one could do yeah for to the hereditary help type, children yeah for the hereditary type there is no such because it's already been um in the gene you cannot do anything about that and um there are no clear cuts precautions and maybe the precautions could be avoidance of injury to those joints and um, one should be careful on some of the activities he or she does like that because he may he is susceptible to um develop um such inflammations around the joint so that could be maybe a precautionary step for children and um the next question is um also is also hereditary mm. And there are no clear cut um, studies which have shown that ulcers are hereditary. Usually, ulcers are, um, are due to exposure to this H. pylori, Helicobacter pylori infection. So, Helicobacter it's a, it's a bacteria infection. And then, because we live in a, a region where we have these. Um, um, helicobacter pylori. So one, an, an individual is being exposed to helicobacter infections. Mm. And this um, eats up 
the walls of the of the stomach or parts of the abdomen leading to ulcer so that is the cause of ulcer primarily and then its management one can approach a doctor for its uh, management drugs could also cause ulcer couldn't they doc? yeah you said okay. D- drugs yeah yeah, certain yeah, drugs. yeah yeah the NSAIDs okay yeah okay. the NSAIDs okay uh, yeah primarily that's the non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs right these are drugs we do take every day like um ibuprofen like diclofenac these are drugs we congest um every day we prescribe them but prolonged exposure um of these drugs might predispose an individual to um ulcer and then um the last question that's um low low bp, low BP. Uh, Kure was asking about low BP. yeah yeah there could be situations whereby an individual can develop low B, uh, low uh, blood pressure in this stress can be that stress yeah not stress. high bp no, now. not high bp that's maybe the depression anxiety depression could actually yeah. lead to low yeah, blood pressure could, yeah to low, wow. blood, low blood pressure not high blood pressure because at times it's um you know blood pressure it's a function not essentially that of the cardiovascular system but it also has to do to the some of those responses or some of those hormones being released so you see such hormones being released in anxiety stress depression can lead to low bp and then um um, you know, essentially, like I usually like to do, it could be physiological, and then it could be. When you say physiological, what do yeah, you mean? It could just, be natural. Uh, yeah, just natural. The person normal. was born with it. Yeah, yeah. Not necessarily someone is being born. For example, a pregnant woman, when she's pregnant, you know, because of that physiological okay. change. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you see her coming with low BP, and then you see. Is it, it hereditary? Is, it's not. It's not naturally women when they are pregnant they become it's because of that um balance in the electrolytes because in the human blood you know there are red cells and there are plasma mm. and in that plasma there are electrolytes that regulate whatever has to sodium potassium whatever has to do with the function of the heart so for a pregnant woman she, re- she retains more water and that's why you see her coming down with swollen legs and mm. what have you. Mm. And because the cardiovascular system somehow we call it physiological failure and that is why she will come with low B. No, I was t- asking about yeah. is it hereditary, the low blood pressure, not in pregnant women now, but no. is, you know, they say high BP yeah. is actually yeah, something that could, yes, that could be inherited. I'm asking low BP, could it be? No, it is not. Okay. It could just be due to physiological, like I said, physiological conditions like pregnancy, like that, mm. or pathological conditions like anxiety, depression, or cardiac failure. Because now the heart is failing, it's not pumping blood the way it's supposed to be. And then those individuals, you see them coming with low BP. Okay. So you see, um, this could be just on its own, or it could arise due to a disease condition. Okay. Still going back to taking your calls this evening on the program Your Health 360 with Dr. Umar Musa with us in the house uh the numbers are still the same zero eight one forty thousand nine eight nine and zero seven zero eight seven eight hundred nine eight nine hello good evening hello good evening yes you're welcome your name hello my name is uh, gideon oh, you're welcome mr gideon go ahead with your question you you suddenly hello? your voice suddenly went low Hello, can you hear me now? Okay, this is better, yes. Okay, okay, okay. I say my questions are two. The first one is, uh, please, I want the doctor to help me on uh, differentiate between coronavirus and this present Delta variant. Okay. One. And the second question is that, uh, for example, if I take the vaccine of coronavirus, if I get contact with the person that has it, will I not be contacted again? If yes, I will not be contacted, fine. If no, I will be contacted. Then what is the reason of taking the vaccine? Thank you. That's my question. All right. And thank you for calling, uh, Mr. Gideon. 
All right. Uh, still taking your calls this evening. Uh, let's see if we can take one more before we have to go. Uh, my own questions had to take a back seat. <laughs> Hello. Good evening. Yes, you're welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Please ask a question quickly. You're too close to your radio set. And this is taking valuable seconds away from us. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Go ahead, please. My name is Janet. Zainab? Janet, Janet. Janet, go ahead, please. Okay, my question goes like this. Uh, what is the cause of hepatitis? What is the cause of hepatitis? Which one of the hepatitis now? Hepatitis C. C, okay. Yes. All right, Janet. Thank you very much for your question. Doc, you have to wrap this up in two minutes. Okay. Um, um, his first question is, what is the difference between coronavirus and Delta? You know, they are all coronavirus um, diseases. You know, coronavirus is just an umbrella name for a group of, uh, or let me say, a class of virus. Yeah, per se. So this um, Delta virus is just a variant from that class. So it's just the same with the COVID-19 we have earlier, but the Delta variant is just telling you that there is a new strain that is now being available. So they are essentially the same. And then his second question is if... He said if, yeah. if the, 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 the one takes the vaccination yes. and they come across someone who has the infection, yes. will the person who has the vaccine mm -hmm. uh, get infected? Yes. If yes, he said... No, if he said if no, fine. Yes. But if yes, why then the push to take vaccines vaccine. if you are still going to come down yeah, to come with down. the infection? Yes. You know, just like I said, it's um it's a novel disease. Um, studies are ongoing on, and they're up to this time, sci scientists are not still sure about um, this disease, and that is why um it's advisable to take these precautions, and um. Uh, medically, you know, what we know is not even about COVID on other um, diseases, especially not, um, not say COVID, for instance, viral diseases. Mm. Once an individual develops it before, he develops, um, maybe once an individual gets it before, he develops an antibody or an immunity against the second um exposure to such virus. Mm. So ideally, the first infection is supposed to protect an individual from second attack because he has been exposed before and has developed antibody to that. And then the essence of vaccines he, um, essentially is for an individual to develop this immunity. So these vaccines are just like death strains of this virus and then they introduced to human beings and then he or she develops immunity against the um, maybe the actual one when it comes to attack such individual that's essentially the importance of vaccines and then uh, that's why i said we are not still sure what is really happening that even the vaccinated individual is not 100 percent protected because if you look at the specificity of these vaccines you see that I think the highest is the one that has 96% coverage or 96% protection. And then you can see some of them have as low as 65. So, and that is why even when he's been vaccinated, he's been advised to still observe these precautionary measures. Mm. And then to the last question, um, um, the cause of hepatitis, um, I think um, she particularly said C. Yeah, yeah, hepatitis C. Mm. Yeah, hepatitis B and C. Um, we know that um, these causes are usually viral causes. That's um, viral hepatitis. Um, um, that's um, the what will I say? Um, the viruses that causes these hepatitis. You know, hepatitis is just an infection. Or inflammation of the liver. So these viruses um, um, B and C, they are the cause of hepatitis. And then we know that um, the transmission of these viruses is usually through blood and other um, secretions of the body. 
and it could be vertically transmitted. That's what we call the vertical transmission from the mother to child, either during birth or um, what have you. Or it can be gotten through blood um, transfusion of infected blood. If one is being transfused, um, a blood um, infected with um, hepatitis C, he or she can get from there. Okay. Yeah. So these are ways in which... Yeah. Now, just quickly about COVID. Uh, you know, you, you because you're a doctor, you say a lot of technical things. Yes. So I just want to quickly put an analogy and for you to tell us whether or not, and this I have to do quickly. Okay. Now, would it be right to say that is COVID and the Delta variant, talking about the Delta variant that came out of COVID-19, is like talking about a mother that gave birth to yeah, a child. Yeah, Would it be right to put it that yeah, way? Yeah, it is right to say that. So it's one and the same. Yeah. You know, the way you and your mom are yeah, kind of like the, the same. to the layman, it's okay, right. Yes, to the layman, <laughs> because that's what we are. Yeah. Now, for this question about, a lot of people are asking, why do I still need to take the vaccine? Yes. Would it be right to just explain it as the vaccine gives you some level yeah, of protection, of protection. Yeah. so that what would have killed yes. this time around can just shift your cap a bit. It, yes. it will not like completely take off the neck. It will just yeah. shift shift the cap. Yes. <laughs> would it be right to say that, Doc? Yeah, it's right to say that. Uh -huh. also. It gives the vaccines and gives some excellent levels of protection. Mm. Yeah, and even if one is to develop... Um, a severe illness so with the vaccine he or she will develop just a mild illness because and this is not only with coronavirus is it with all, all viral, the vaccines yes all the viral diseases and all the vaccines we have been having the polio you mm. see polio is essentially a viral entity also so whooping so, cough yes whooping cough they are all they all have viral causes right so and that is why i try to say that vaccines in general they are being given to an individual so that that individual will develop some level of protection. Right. So that when he or she is being exposed to such infections in the future, that protection he or she develops will not protect him against the infection. And the infection and won't is, be as bad. Yeah, yes, it won't be as bad as it's supposed to be. Right. So when, if an individual, for instance, is supposed to maybe develop a severe illness, so with that protection, he or she will just have mild illness or will not even have it at all. Hmm. Yeah. Dr. Umar Musa, we want to thank you so much, so, so much for making time to come all the way from Zaria. We really appreciate you. Um, we have you in Kaduna Metropolis for one night, so enjoy your night here thank in you Kaduna. Yeah. Thank you so much. And for those who have been listening, thank you so much. For those who called and those who just sat back and had a great time listening, there are more interesting questions. We don't know when we'll get Dr. Umar back, but we will be asking. Just keep your set glued to 98.9 FM right here in Victor, the Victorias and the strong men in the house are just standing by. They're waiting. They want to come and give it to you the way they usually do every Friday evening talking about for the place. They're here. Stay with us and remain Victorias. Do have a beautiful weekend ahead.